Prejudice of Amendment number 14. You went to the verge, you say, and come back safely. Some have not been so fortunate. Some have fallen. Children go lightly there from crag to crag and coin to coin, where even the goat is weary, and make a sport of it. They fling down pebbles, following with eyes undizzy the long curve, the long, slow, outward curve into the abyss, as far as I can follow. And they themselves turn back unworried to the here and now. But you have been there too? I saw at length the space-defying pine that on the last out-jutting rock has cramped its powerful roots. There stood I too. Under that tree I stood, my hand against its resinous bark, my face turned out and downward to the fourfold kingdom. The wind roared from all quarters. The waterfall came down, it seemed, from heaven, pouring elements, earth, air, and water. The cry of eagles, chatter of fo- These were the frightful language of that place. I understood it ill, but understood. You understood it? Tell me, then, its meaning. It was an all, a nothing, or a something? Chaos, or divine love, or emptiness? Water and earth and air and the sun's fire? Or else a question, simply? Water and fire were there, and air and earth, there too was emptiness, all and nothing, and something too, and love. But these poor words, these squeaks of ours, in which we strive to mimic with strained throats and tongues, the spawning and outrageous elements, alas, how paltry are they, for I saw, what did you see? I saw myself and God. I saw the ruin in which Godhead lives, shapeless and vast, the strewn wreck of the world, sadness unplumbed, misery without bound. Wailing I heard, but also I heard joy. Wreckage I saw, but also I saw flowers. Hatred I saw, but also I saw love. And thus I saw myself. And this alone? And this alone awaits you, when you dare to that sheer verge where horror hangs, and tremble against the falling rock and looking down, search the dark kingdom. It is to self you come, and that is God. It is the seed of seeds, seed for disastrous and immortal worlds. It is the answer that no question asked. Number 19. Watch long enough, and you will see the leaf fall from the bough. Without a sound it falls, and soundless meets the grass. And so you have a bare bough, and a dead leaf in dead grass. Something has come and gone, and that is all. But what were all the tumults in this action? What wars of atoms in the twig? What ruins, fiery and disastrous, in the leaf? Timeless the tumult was, but gave no sign. Only the leaf fell, and the bough was bare. This is the world. There is no more than this. The unseen and disastrous prelude, shaking the trivial act, from the terrific action. Speak, and the ghosts of change, past and to come, throng the brief word. The maelstrom has us all. Number 63. Thus systole addressed diastole, the heart contracting with its grief of burden, to the lax heart with grief of burden gone. Thus star to dead leaf speaks, thus cliff to sea, and thus the spider on a summer's day to the bright thistledown trapped in the web. No language leaps this chasm like a lightning. Here is no message of assuagement blown from Ecuador to Greenland. Here is only a trumpet blast that calls dead men to arms, the granite's pity for the cloud, the whisper of time to space. Preludes for Memnon, number three. Sleep, and between the closed eyelids of sleep, from the dark spirit's still unresting grief, the one tear burns its way. O oh God, O oh God, what monstrous world is this whence no escape even in sleep? Between the fast shut lids, this one tear comes, hangs on the lashes, falls, symbol of some gigantic dream that shakes the secret sleeping soul. And I descend by a green cliff that fronts the world long sea, disastrous shore where bones of ships and rocks are mixed, 
and beating waves bring in the sails of unskilled mariners ill-starred. The gulls fall in a cloud upon foul floatsome there. The air resounds with cries of scavengers. Dream, and between the close-locked lids of dream, the terrible infinite intrudes its blue. Ice, silence, death, the abyss of nothing. O oh God, O oh God, let the sore soul have peace. Deliver it from this bondage of harsh dreams. Release this shadow from its object, this object from its shadow. Let the fleet soul go nimbly, down, down, from step to step of dark, from dark to deeper dark, from dark to rest. And let no Theseus thread of memory shine in that labyrinth or on those stairs to guide her back, nor bring her where she lies, remembrance of a torn world well forgot. Number 29. What shall we do? What shall we think? What shall we say? Why, as the crocus does on a March morning, with just such shape and brightness, such fragility, such white and gold, and out of just such earth? Or as the cloud does on the northeast wind, fluent and formless, or as the tree that withers? What are we made of, strumpet, but of these? Nothing. We are the sum of all these accidents, compounded all our days of idiot trifles, the this, the that, the other, and the next, what X or Y said, or old uncle thought, whether it rained or not, and at what hour, whether the pudding had two eggs or three, and those we loved were ladies. Were they ladies? And did they read the proper books and simper with proper persons at the proper teas? Oh, Christ and God and all deciduous things, let us void out this nonsense and be healed. There is no doubt that we shall do as always just what the crocus does. There is no doubt your Helen of Troy is all that she has seen, all filth, all beauty, all honor and deceit. The spider's web will hang in her bright mind, the dead fly die there doubly, and the rat finds sewers to his liking. She will walk in such a world as this alone could give. This of the moment this mad world of mirrors and of corrosive memory. She will know the lecheries of the cockroach and the worm, the chemistry of the sunset, the foul seeds laid by the intellect in the simple heart. And knowing all these things, she will be she. She will be also the sunrise on the grass plain, but pay no heed to that. She will be also the infinite tenderness of the voice of morning, but pay no heed to that. She will be also the grain of elmwood and the ply of water, whirlings in sand and smoke, wind in the ferns, the fixed bright eyes of dolls, and this is all. <laughs>